The Indiana Hoosiers are hosting Penn State this weekend, and it's time for the next man up mentality. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome in. It is the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen each and every day. Also, your go-to spot for all things Indiana athletics. And I got to start the episode. All right, I got to start today's episode. Happy Friday. Hope you're doing well. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to you, the listener, the watcher, the fan, the everydayer that is here. We hit over 1,700 subscribers on YouTube. All right, so thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Hey, now it's time we move on to 1,800, right? Then 19 and then 2,000. We'll keep making that push as we go. So thank you so much for doing that on YouTube. Uh, Make sure you're always liking the videos. That helps it share. Get it out there. We grow as a channel. Also, keep subscribing if you have not yet already on YouTube. And if you're on the audio platform, thank you so much as well. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Indiana hosting Penn State, Indiana basketball that is hosting the Nittany Lions of Penn State this Saturday early afternoon, I guess you could call it, inside of Assembly Hall. And given what we know and kind of understand about the health of Xavier Johnson and Malik Renew, it's time for the next man up mentality. And that's what we're talking about today. We'll talk about who's going to play. We'll talk about keys to the game and also take a look around the Big Ten. What's been happening in this crazy week of basketball, including last night between Nebraska and Wisconsin. Holy smokes. And then kind of look at what's going on this weekend around the conference as well. But first, Indiana and Penn State on Saturday. The Hoosiers hosting the Nittany Lions on FS1. All right, Indiana 13 and 8 overall, 5 and 5 in Big Ten play. Penn State 10 and 11. They're an under 500 team, folks, and 4 and 6 in conference play. According to ESPN Analytics, Indiana has almost a 70% chance to win. All right, so. As you look at kind of some team statistics really quickly, uh, Penn State scoring over 75 points a game. They also give up 74 points. Indiana's right around in that same area. Uh, Penn State shoots about 43% from the floor. Uh, They're a decent, not a great rebounding team. They don't pass the ball a whole lot, but they are coming off a win. All right, Penn State coming off a win on the road at Rutgers by 15, which is pretty impressive giving. Uh, what Rutgers did just uh, a little bit ago. I mean, they beat Nebraska. They beat Indiana. We know that. So um, it's not a great Rutgers team, but Penn State got it. They got it done. And again, it's a road game in the in the Big Ten. So um, that that's impressive for Penn State. You look at what they've done in their last couple of games. They beat Wisconsin after they lost to Purdue. They beat Wisconsin, lost at Ohio State, ugly loss at home to Minnesota and then went on the road and beat Rutgers. So they're coming off a win, but so are we, right? So are we. We're coming off a win, is Indiana, and and feeling pretty good about ourselves after the Iowa win, despite the injuries. And we had a big episode about that yesterday, about what we know so far. And what I can tell you again is a little bit more on that from what I'm being told is I think we can expect Xavier Johnson to not play on Saturday. I think that's a pretty pretty clear cut and dry thing um, that I, I don't think Xavier Johnson's going to play. Malik Renew, I think it's a game time decision. I think he is kind of still up in the air. They're still kind of wondering where he is at right now. So answering that question on who's going to play, if I had to take a guess, I'm going to say Malik Renew will maybe play. Xavier Johnson, I don't think plays at all. And if I'm just, if I, my gut's telling me that he doesn't play for Malik Renew. I hope he does. I hope he's okay enough to go, but my gut tells me neither one of them play. And if that's the case, or if even just one of them doesn't play, like Mike Woodson said, head coach for Indiana basketball, it's time for the next man up mentality, right? Who is going to step up in their replacement? If it's Xavier Johnson, could we see Anthony Leal have another big game? 
Could we see Gabe Cups finally get comfortable and continue to orchestrate the offense and maybe be a scoring threat, right? Could we see Trey Galloway, who we know has potential for big games. He just hasn't put it together yet consistently. I See, with Trey Galloway, I would rather him go off for 12 or 15 every night rather than put up a 30-piece and then disappear for four or five games. Like I just think we need to be able to count on Trey Galloway, and we just haven't been able to do that as of late. So is it him? Is it Anthony Leal? Is it Gabe Cups? Is it somebody else, right? C.J. Gunn maybe could come in and hit some shots. He's done it before. So it's going to be a group effort in the guard situation. Um, for Malik Renew, if he doesn't play, then you hope Khalil Ware is good to go. I think he is. I think Khalil Ware is fine. I think he's going to play. Um, he has to have a big game like we know that he can. And then who else steps in? I think Mackenzie Abaco has got to become that dude. I know he's a starter already, but I think you really need some high-level production from him. You get the points right now, but, man, they're hard to come by, right? I mean, it's 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 brutal watching him shoot the basketball, and it's not even a lot of his jump shots. He's missing layups and floaters and stuff, that he's just not getting the, the, the help on, and I think that's got to change. And when that does, he's going to become a very confident player. What was he, 4 of 17 the other night? That's not good. That's not effective offense from McKenzie and Baco. He has to step up, especially on the defensive end as well. That's where Mbako has to step up more than anything if Malik Renu can't play because Khalil Ware can't do it all. And I like Peyton Sparks, but he's not Malik Renu. He doesn't have the height and the length of Malik Renu to hold his own down low. So he has to step up, McKenzie and Baco does, on the defensive side of the floor. And speaking of defense, the one guy, that Indiana has to worry about. The whole make somebody else beat you mindset has to be taken into this game, and we'll get into some more of this with keys to the game coming up in just a second, but to kind of tease you into that, there is one guy. His name is Kanye Clary. If you cannot stop him, you are going to lose, and I'll leave it at that. We'll talk about keys to the game coming up for Indiana as they host Penn State on Saturday. That's coming up here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. I don't know about you, but I'm still trying to get my Super Bowl plans together. Everybody's like, oh, we're doing this, and we're doing this. I'm like, look, give me a couch, give me a drink, give me FanDuel, and let's go. And that's what we're going to be doing on Super Bowl Sunday. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or possibly three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back into Locked On Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day, your go to spot for all things Indiana athletics Hoosiers hosting the Nittany Lions of Penn State on the hardwood inside of Assembly Hall come Saturday afternoon and getting into some. Keys to the game here for Indiana. How can you get back-to-back -back wins? I don't consider that a streak. That's just me. That's just my personal thing. I think a streak is three in a row. But you can get back-to-back -back wins here. And then you have a chance to build a streak with Ohio State coming up. But let's not worry about the Buckeyes just yet. Let's get Penn State knocked out of the way. But I mentioned to you in the previous segment, there is one man that you have to stop for Penn State. There's one. And it's the guard, Clary. He's played in 20 games, right? He missed a game, and Penn State was fine. He averages 31 minutes a game, and he averages 18 points a game. 18 points. He is their one-man band. He is the go-to guy. He's going to handle the ball. He's going to shoot the ball. He's going to pass the ball. He's going to do everything on offense for Penn State. Averages 18 points a game, three assists per game, two turnovers a game, but here are the numbers that are going to really get you. 
He shoots 46% from the floor as a guard, 83% from the free throw line. If you foul him, he's going to make it, and 38% from behind the arc. He is their best shooter by far. He is their best player by far. Now, his defense is fine, but this Penn State team ain't worried about defense. They're worried about getting him the ball. Who guards him? We've had this conversation before about high-level guards going up against this Indiana team. And for the most part, I'm not going to say we've done a perfect job because we haven't, but I think there's been a pretty good effort on guards against Indiana. And again, I think it comes back to a group effort. I, I think you have to have Trey Galloway, and now it's going to be Anthony Leo or Gabe Cups, who... Again, believe it or not, I think it's done pretty well defensively, has has Gabe Cups. Now, he's going to need a little help in case Clary goes around him and blows by him. Then that's where Khalil Ware and Mackenzie Baco step in. They have to be in position. And that's where I'm going back to Mackenzie and Baco not getting stuck, not getting caught ball watching. He has to be in the correct spots. And if that's the case, I think you're going to be okay. And for Penn State, they have one other guy. It's, it's Ace Baldwin Jr., the other guard, who averages 13 points a game. Then that's it. That's all they've got. They've got guys that contribute single digits, but Indiana's got to be able to take care of business. If you can shut him down, I think you're in a good spot. Even if he goes off for 20 points, okay, don't let the other ones beat you. Don't let the other ones take advantage of you. And, again, you look at this team – as a as a whole, they only shoot 30% from behind the arc, 74% from the free throw line. That's not bad. And 43% from the floor. So Indiana's weakness over this season has been giving up three-pointers, but Penn State doesn't make threes. They're 30%. That's not great. That's below average. Let them shoot. Let them shoot. And let's dominate the paint on both sides of the floor. I think we can do that. I really do. And I think that needs to be the mindset is, okay, where is Clary? Get him, double him if you have to, and force them to shoot threes and long twos because this is not a great shooting team. Clary is, but nobody else is. So uh, I think if you're able to do that, you're going to be in a good spot defensively. Communication, rotations, all of that going to be crucial. And we got to force some turnovers in this game, don't we? I mean... Iowa had single-digit turnovers, less than five turnovers the other night. Now, Indiana still won, but you got to force some turnovers and get out and run and get those easy buckets, those easy points. I talk about it all the time, how Indiana's got to get out in transition and get the easy non-five-on-five -five buckets because we know that this Hoosiers offense struggles in five-on-five. -five. They just do. It's a fact, whether you like it or not. They struggle in five-on-five -five basketball. How do you avoid that? You get turnovers, you force turnovers, you get out and run, and you score one on none or two on ones or two on twos. You see what I'm saying here? That's what Indiana's got to do in this game and moving forward for the rest of the season, really. But a good opportunity to do that against a Penn State team who, if you fluster them a little bit, they're prone to turning it over. They're prone to making bad decisions and taking bad shots. If you watch them, if you force them into a bad shot, they will take it. And I think Indiana's got to find a way to do that, whether that's playing some zone and trapping a ball handler or just putting full court pressure or just making the correct rotations and blocking out the paint and saying, shoot it, I dare you. I think if you can do that, I think Indiana has a good chance to win this game. Offensively for me, as we continue talking keys to the game here, just do what you do. Just do what you do. I don't think Penn State has anybody that can truly stop you offensively if you just keep doing your thing. Wow, they've got a guy. He's 6'11". Okay. Khalil wears seven foot. Guess what? Mackenzie Mbako is standing right next to him. And there have been very, 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 very few people that have been able to fully and truly stop Khalil Ware. I don't think this guy can do it. I'm not number 22. I ain't confident in that. I'm not. I think Khalil Ware, feed him the basketball. And until it doesn't work, until Penn State stops it, go back to it and go back to it and go back to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that's what Indiana has to do here. Now, are we going to see 
eight three pointers from Indiana? I don't know. I would love so. I hope so. I'd love to see it. I don't expect that, right? I don't think anybody expects that anymore from this Indiana team, but I hope there is some confidence on the offensive end of the floor. I hope there is a mindset of, okay, we know we can do it. We know we've got it in us. Don't take a bunch. Don't take 25 because this Indiana team's not going to make them. But get up 15 or, or 20 of them. Get up 15 threes and see if you can knock a few down just to get out to an early lead or, if, God forbid, you got to come back or anything like that. Indiana has to be able to knock it down. Just to be a threat. Just be a threat from out there. You don't have to be the Golden State Warriors, right? You don't have to be Kevin Durant. But just be a threat from outside, and that's going to make you so much harder to defend as a team if you're Indiana. So I hope we can see that. And then take care of the basketball. Take care of the basketball, move it around, and crash the boards on both ends of the floor, defensive and offensive. There is no reason Penn State should out-rebound you on Saturday if you're Penn State or if you're Indiana. We should not be out-rebounded. It's just inexcusable to me, even without Malik Renew. I think. We are just a much bigger, better team on the boards. If we go for it and we try, that includes the guards as well. Trey Galloway has done a decent job. He's got to get some boards. I'm looking at even Anthony Leo or, or Gabe Cups. Just be around. Go for the basketball. Find a body. Find a body and go get the basketball. I look at McKenzie and Baco on that too. Peyton Sparks and whoever else decides they want to get into this game. And that's something I'm really interested in here with the expectation that I have that Xavier Johnson does not play. I don't think Malik Renew will play, but I hope he does. And that's why we've talked about like he won't. But if he does, then I think Indiana's in really good shape here. I'm curious to see how deep Mike Woodson goes on this bench on Saturday. How deep will he go into his bench? Is he going to play six or seven guys, or is he going to try and go deeper and play maybe seven or eight guys? I don't know. I think the score will probably depend on that. I think matchups and situation will will affect that as well. And so I'm really curious on how that's going to look. And it sucks that we're having to, to talk about, oh, who else do we have on the bench in February because we're dealing with injury problems like we have all year long. But that's college basketball. That's sports, man. Everybody else deals with it at some point. We're not special in that aspect, let me tell you that. So Indiana and Penn State. I'm excited for this game. I think it's a big opportunity for the Hoosiers to get another win. I think we do win. I think Indiana will have a good game. Um, I'm not going to say it'll be a blowout by any means, but I'm going to take the Hoosiers to win and uh, win comfortably. How about that? I'll take Indiana to beat Penn State on Saturday. Coming up, we'll take a look around the Big Ten. What's been going on this week? It's been wild in this conference like it has all year long. Plus, what's coming up tomorrow in the Big Ten and on Sunday as well as we get into the month of February. We'll take a look around the Big Ten coming up on Locked on Hoosiers. Welcome back into Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. Taking a look around the Big Ten this weekend. But before we do that, we got to look and see what's been going on this week. Right? I know we talked a little bit about it, um, but we've had other games and stuff happen since then. Um, and we'll go back to we'll go back to Tuesday. All right, we'll go back to Tuesday when Indiana played Iowa. You had Illinois go on the road and take down Ohio State 87-75. All right, not bad. Michigan State had to come back against Michigan. They win that one 81-62. to Then you move into Wednesday, right? Then you move into Wednesday, and we all thought we had a big thing going here, right? We all thought it was going to be a great day in the state of Indiana, and then Northwestern couldn't pull it through. They took Purdue to overtime and I really thought Northwestern was going to get it done in the in the extra five minutes. And, man, they just didn't. I mean, they just did not. They fell apart in that overtime period. They took the number two team in the country at Purdue all the way to overtime. But then, this is wild, they gave up 24 points in overtime alone. That's wild to me. Gave up 34 the entire second half. Gave up 24 just in overtime. And they fall to Purdue. 
does Northwestern 105 to 96. This Penn State team that we're talking about, they went on the road to Rutgers and beat them 61 46. I don't know how impressive that is. Um, Rutgers is two and seven in the Big Ten. So take that for, for what you will. But again, Penn State, they get a win. And you have to remember that they beat us. So keep that in mind. If you're uh if you're judging that win, keep that in mind. And then how about the game last night? How about the game last night on Thursday? Number six, Wisconsin, on the road at Nebraska. We know how streaky that Nebraska team is. We know how good they can be and how bad they can be. And coming back from a 17-point deficit, largest in Nebraska Big Ten basketball history, they come back, they score 40 in the second half after trailing 43-27 at the half. They score 40 to Wisconsin's 24 in the second half, go to overtime, and they take down the number six ranked team in the country, the Badgers, 80 to 72. That's a big, big win for Nebraska and a devastating loss for Wisconsin because, man, they were winning. They were rolling, and that's a game that they had in hand, and that's a game where you're like thanking your lucky stars that you get it done in the Big Ten on the road, and then they blew it. And we know, again, that Nebraska team is is good, man. We saw it. We saw it firsthand, and so have other teams. So that was a big result on Thursday. Coming up tonight, Ohio State at Iowa. Interesting battle of the mids here. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't – I honestly have no idea. I just thought Ohio State would be better. I really did. I just thought Ohio State was going to be better than they are. And then you look around the Big Ten, not the – sexiest Saturday, right? Penn State, of course, here in Indiana, taking on our Hoosiers. You have Northwestern at Minnesota, Rutgers at Michigan, and Maryland at Michigan State. Really interested in that game uh, that Saturday afternoon on Fox. So uh, these other games, even the Penn State-Indiana game, like they don't have a ton of, a ton of, uh, I guess, weight when it comes to the tournament when it comes to the standings. I mean, if Minnesota could beat Northwestern, they'd pull themselves right back into the mix. Uh, Rutgers, Michigan, yikes, that's pretty ugly. Maryland, Michigan State's a good one too. That's a battle of the middle of the grounds. I'm not going to say battle of the mids, but mad, battle of the uh, middle of the pack, if you will, in the Big Ten. And then Sunday, Sunday is where it's at. One of three top 10 matchups in college basketball this weekend. Number two, Purdue, on the road at number six, Wisconsin. A Purdue team just coming off an overtime win and a Wisconsin team coming off an overtime loss. Thankfully for Wisconsin, they are at home. That is on CBS at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Really, really good game. The other one is Nebraska at Illinois. We know that Illinois team is beatable. Indiana arguably should have beaten Illinois, right? And then that Nebraska team, Coming off their big performance, that's going to be a really fun game on Sunday night. So looking forward to that. But yeah, Purdue-Wisconsin, man, you talk about a heavyweight fight there at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin is so beatable, and that's what really upsets me is they're, they're good, but they're not great, right? They're not great by any means. And you're talking about a, a matchup between the two top teams in the Big Ten right now. Purdue is 9-2, and two, Wisconsin's 8-2. and two compared to Indiana at 5-5. Five and five. So, luckily, one of those two teams has to lose. One of those two teams is about to pick up their third loss. If Indiana can get a win on Saturday, we become 6-5. and five. We tie with Nebraska. And as much as it is fun to watch Nebraska try to upset people, we really need them to lose because they're ahead of us right now. Then we move up. We need... Honestly, we need Northwestern to lose as well because they're ahead of us at six and four. We're trying to get the top four. We're trying to get top four in the Big Ten. But, man, we got people on our tail. Michigan State, Maryland. I talked about Minnesota as well. I mean, this thing is far from over in this Big Ten conference. It's a lot of fun. So be sure, obviously, watching Indiana, Penn State. There's some decent games Saturday afternoon, but Sunday afternoon is the big one in this conference this weekend. Purdue at Wisconsin, number two versus number six. Really, really interesting game as the Big Ten continues to be a dogfight, man. It really does. So does college basketball. It's been so much fun. Three top ten matchups this weekend. This is what we dream about as basketball fans in this state, man. 
enjoy it because I know I'm going to. Well, that's going to do it here on Locked on Hoosiers for today. We'll have a short reaction episode go up tomorrow following Penn State and Indiana for a bonus episode on Saturday. So be sure you are tuning in for that. Turn on notifications so you don't miss it. That's on YouTube and on any of your audio platforms. Again, thank you so much for 1,700 subscribers. We ellipsed that, and I'm very, very happy for that. Let's start making the push to 1,800. All right, we're at 1,715. You guys crushed the goal. Nicely done. That's props to you. If you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, please do it. It's free. It's easy. It takes one little tap with your thumb, all right? Help us out. Do that. And then, yes, we will be back tomorrow. Bonus episode reacting to Indiana and Penn State. I'm predicting a win for the Hoosiers as they'll go back-to-back in the Big Ten. So until then, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.